Welcome to number two in the expert series in which we slay a few myths. But first, please subscribe to the channel, click on the like button, click the bell icon to get notified and support me on Patreon if you can. There's a link in the description below. Have you ever heard or said any of these? They're taken from the blog of Bjorn Struestrup, excuse my mock Danish accent. However, for those that don't know him, he's the man that invented C++. So if he doesn't know it, nobody does. Um, I will put the link in the description, of course, and I recommend that you uh, go and look at it. But there are five common misconceptions, in his view, um, about C++. And I have to say, having been programming exclusively in C++ for many a year, that um, I absolutely agree with him. And that's not to say uh, just C++. I've been programming C since the 1980s. Uh, and when C++ came along, I thought, oh, this is a bit complicated and horrible. But once I got into it, especially the standard library, the quality and speed of my coding improved unbelievably. So today we're just going to look very, very briefly uh, at this point four. Uh, and I'll tell you why. I spend a lot of time in... Um, support groups on Facebook and various places like that and I regularly see what are known as holy wars with people either slagging off C++ or slagging off C and in my experience there generally the hard-nosed C only programmers are the worst offenders and again just my experience I generally tend to find those more in the STM32 groups um, However, there's these raging arguments about why one is better than the other, and they are absolutely littered with misconceptions of the type you've normally seen. Oh, C++ is bloated, it's big and it's slow. And they're absolutely untrue. Uh, and I'm going to show you one tiny example that was, I was prompted to, to, to um, think about today. Um, my own Facebook groups regularly has discussions about these things. It's a natural and I apologize unavoidable trait in me that I will correct misconceptions where I see them. I can't help it. And of course, I would love to convert people to C++ so that they can experience the same degree of increase in productivity and reduction of debugging um, that, that I have experienced since becoming a C++ only programmer. And finally, of course, just to make the world a better place. So the trigger for this was a post in one of my groups from a guy who had written a new kind of sort algorithm. Um, because he was unhappy with the performance of quicksort. Now, I don't expect you to read this all, but basically he's done some comparisons between the two uh, and decided that he has invented a, a better sort algorithm. Uh, and to be fair to him, he has produced the evidence there to show that his, what he calls curtain sort, is better than the standard, which I'm presuming he means Q sort, um, on, on several fronts. However, I have to pause here and give a caveat, because immediately my alarm bells rang. And the reason my alarm bells rang, because having been around programming as long as I have, which is since 1975, People of my vintage know that there is no better wheel, there is no better sliced bread, 
and the best sort of algorithms were worked out by genius boffins in the 60s, 70s and 80s. So anybody thinking that they have found a better sort algorithm who is not a professor of computing theory at MIT is going to worry me. Now, this guy might be. I don't know. But you'll see why in a, in a minute. I, I, I don't think he is. So with that caution in mind, I thought to myself, well, let's take these figures at face value and let me see what the standard lib sort would do. So I knocked up a, a tiny little program, which basically defines um, a vector of ints. It then randomly fills it with random values, sets the timer, does the sort, it calculates the time difference. OK, there's very little in there. All it does, effectively, is sort 10,000 random ints so that I can compare with, you know, the curtain sort. Let's have a quiz now, then. How long do you think my standard lib sort took? And here's the options. A, slightly better than curtain sort. B, slightly worse than curtain sort c ridiculous um d yeah worse thereby proving all of the naysayers correct is that it's fatter and slower well give yourself a medal if you said c because the standard lib sort ran in 18 milliseconds, which is 221 times faster than our poor anonymous user's marvellous new curtain sort. So my initial feelings were vindicated. Um, and note that it's 570 times faster than standard. Now, my alarm bells rang again because I'm thinking this cannot be true. It cannot be. Uh, that fast but I mean there's your proof that that's how long my code took to run but because of those worries um, I did some research and Schustrup the master himself says in part three of that um, Dispelling Myths blog that he recently ran it and found it two and a half times faster than the QSort version. Your mileage will vary from compiler to compiler and from machine to machine, but I have never ever seen QSort beat sort. He says he's seen it run 10 times faster. So if if Shoestrap has seen it run 10 times faster, then I'm seriously worried about my code that runs 220 times faster. So worried that I actually put an extra line in it and and printed the values afterwards. And you can see, yes, of course, they are all sorted in order as expected. Now, what that does then is kind of shift the onus back onto the user and the user code. And that's an important point, which I'm going to I'm going to move on to next. And I'm going to do that by way of discussing data structures briefly, because there can hardly be a program written of any worth that doesn't use a, a, a popular and common and well understood data structure of some kind or another. Now, this is taken from another one of my favorite libraries, ESP Async Web Server. Now, as you can see there, the author has invented his own version of a thing called a linked list. Now, the main thing that the standard library was written for back in the day was to safely and robustly and consistently implement common data structures. So without a doubt, 
this guy is reinventing the wheel. Now that doesn't mean that the wheel is going to be square or slower than standard lib. However, in my experience, people's roll your own, do it yourself code very, very rarely comes close to standard lib code because standard lib code is written by the best of the best programmers in the world. Now, for a, a tiny bit of balance, um, albeit that I have located and found at least three serious bugs in the ASP, ESP Async Web Server Library, I have to say that none of them were related to the implementation of the linked list that I know about or that I have found yet. And that's important because when compared with, let's say, a standard lib forward list, I trust the standard lib code. I know it works. I know it's been beaten to death over decades. Whereas this guy, bear in mind, I've already found three of his bugs. I kind of a little bit wary about whether his linked list is going to be good. Um, as you can see, it's quite involved there and it's 190 lines of code. Now, to do the same in standard lib, you write one line. You define a linked list. Moving on. Let's look at the pros and cons then of using C++ versus rolling your own because your code's bound to be better and smaller. As mentioned, Standard Lib's been around for decades. It's written by some of the best programmers in the world. We're talking about guys who are professors of computing at MIT and Harvard, etc., etc. There's no new sliced bread. There's no new wheel. The algorithms in Standard Lib are the best. Now, yes, that's just my opinion, but I doubt whether you'll find anybody that's used it for a long time and been around a long time who is going to disagree with that. Even if they do on some point, they're absolutely going to agree that unless you're at that same level of code, your code is not going to be close. As I've said, from my experience and from other regular knowledgeable users, it's usually faster than user code when used carefully to avoid possible problems that could arise. The same is true of any code. You can write rubbish code in any language. However, when using standard lib, there's a few little gotchas that you need to be aware of. If you code for those, you're going to produce very small, very compact, very fast code in an order of magnitude of time less than it takes you to write your own. So your code is probably going to be slower. The same is true of the code size. Your code is probably going to be bigger. Now, in this particular instance on ESP8266, some parts of the core already include some standard library features and functions. So if there were to be any overhead just from using C++ over C, then that's not the case in the ESP async web server case, which makes you wonder why the guy chose to wrote his own because his code at 190 lines almost certainly is going to increase the overall binary size against using a forward list, for example. Now, I don't have time in my life to rewrite his library with that in and prove the point. You'll just have to take my word for it. Or the word of people like Bjorn Struestrup. I, I find that so difficult to say. Anyway. So if the user is already using standard overlib, then standard overlib, what am I talking about? Standard lib, then the overhead is, again, zero. Standard lib works. You can absolutely trust it in these fundamental data structure examples. It's been around for decades. It's been beaten to death. There's absolutely no way 
that your code can say that. So even if it does work in all the cases you've tested it with, nobody is going to trust it the same way that they trust standard libco. And it literally takes seconds to write a few lines in standard lib to deal with complex data structures that are going to take even a good programmer many hours, probably days, to write and fully debug. Now, yes, he can drop that into his next project, but then if his next project needs a map, he's then got to repeat the process and write a worse version of map. And so you really need to question why people continue to do this kind of thing when C++ standard lib is a thousand times better in every way. Uh, and the only answer is ignorance. Ignorance and belief in those myths, which are just myths. And when you start doing this yourself, you'll see how much of a myth they are. And your productivity will improve. And your debugging time will decrease. And your code will be a lot more stable and a lot more trustworthy. Now then, I'm just a random man on the internet. So don't take my word for it. Take the words of the masters, read that blog, Google for C++ myths, do your own research, try a few experiments of your own, uh, and if you're particularly interested in the sorting aspects of it, Stu Strip's got a whole section in part three of that, um, of that blog post that I mentioned. Well, I hope you have found this interesting, but more, I hope you have found it thought-provoking to the point where you're at least going to give C++ a try if you haven't done already. And if you do try it and come back and find that I'm wrong, I'll give you your money back. As always, thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe, like, click the notification button and support me on Patreon if you can. Thanks and uh, see you next time.